one, we're doing a Kickstarter right now. It is for our comic, The Magpie, which is a horror romance comic about a lesbian love triangle with an elder god. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please go check it out. There's a link in the description down below, and the campaign goes to early June. So if you really want to back it, you better get on it quick. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's it. Into the video. So today I am working on another main character for uh, Scourge of Nine Point. Um, so this guy's name is Sir Feathercatcher, and he is one of the cat knights. I know, I'm finally not drawing raccoons anymore. Yay! <laughs> I mean, not that it's bad to draw raccoons. They're really cute. And I had a lot of fun working on their designs, but I'm excited to move on to some new main characters. So yeah, so I'm jumping into... Feathercatcher's designs. He hangs out with Mitzi, um, who's another one of the main characters. She's more a main character. Feathercatcher's like a, a secondary character. Um, and he's Mitzi's like mentor character. Um, so he's a he's a knight. He might take Mitzi on as his his squire. And yeah, he's a he's a cool kitty cat. <laughs> um, so Bones and I had some trouble deciding on like what kind of cat he would be. That's one interesting thing we're running into with this story is like we have to like based off of the like the kind of character they are. Um, well, Bones will already pick like the species. It's like they're a cat or they're a bat or they're a bear or something like he has a list of everything he wants to include. So he usually just gives me the 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 script and like the. He has a little document that's been made about all our characters and settings for all the design work. So he hands me these things and it tells me like basic information like, you know, Feathercatcher's a cat, he's a knight, he's older, he's been through some battles, um, he's grumpy, and he's a, a blue point, which means that he has gray fur from like, it radiates from like his nose and his ears and his tail and his paws, because um, that's what that pointed fur pattern is on cats. Um, so I'm given like all this information and then we have to kind of choose like, okay, you know, he's a cat, but what breed of cat is he? And, you know, sometimes I'll be given even less information than he's a blue point. It could be like, he's a cat. And then I have to figure out like what breed of cat he is, maybe what color he is, the body type. Because we might have multiple blue point cats that are all, say, like Siamese cats, and they all have to look different. So that's a big challenge. <laughs> and like, you'd think considering like I draw humans and they might all be like teen girls or something that I'm drawing, that they have to look different. It doesn't feel as hard drawing humans, because I guess I'm used to drawing humans. I mean, part of that comes down to I have a lot of symbols I draw sometimes. Because I'm bad. <laughs> um, but yeah, but it feels easier to draw humans and make them, give them lots of variety between characters. Whereas like with animals, it's like, I look at one picture of an animal and I'm like, okay, this is what they look like. <laughs> but I have to be able to differentiate all these different animals. And yeah, <laughs> it's tough. I have to learn what characteristics make like a blue point Siamese cat look like a blue point Siamese cat. And then I have to keep those characteristics in mind while like changing other bits and baubles to make sure that the characters look different. <sighs> it's tough. I mean, there's the basics of it that are pretty like understandable. Like I've talked about them before with character design where like you want to base your character off like a simple shape and there has to be like repeating patterns in their designs and they have to feel cohesive and it's like augmented from like the way they move and their personality and the way they act. So like those are really simple principles to follow when you're doing character design but it's also like they sound simple but in practice they're very difficult because it is difficult to make two characters look super different. You know, like, right? Because it sounds like it shouldn't be, but it is in practice. Because I have my defaults that I go to where I tend to, like, draw one thing and I have to push myself to get away from that. And then you come up with a design and then you have to push it further. Ugh, it's a lot of work. <laughs> Another thing I'm kind of struggling with with drawing animals is applying, like, 
age to them. I mean, I guess it gets easier with, like, say, baby animals, because I can say, like, look at a wolf cub and be like, okay, so this is what the baby wolf looks like, and this is what the adult looks like, and I can kind of play with that to make them look like young or a baby. But when it's, like, an elderly wolf, it's like, how do you draw that? Because, <laughs> um, like, you want the human characteristic to come through, because they are, like, anthros, right? So a lot of their expression is based off human expression. So it's like, I have to show, like, the age signifiers of humans, but on, like, a cat or a wolf. And so, like, I'm struggling with that with Feathercatcher, because he's, like, he's not old, but he's, like, older. He's not, like, a young man anymore. So, or a young cat anymore, I guess. So trying to, like, add add wrinkles, and you're like, wait, he can't have face wrinkles because he's got fur. <laughs> So yeah, that's 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 what I'm figuring out right now. It's a struggle. I'd be curious how other people do this, like with when you're drawing animals or like aliens or something, just like non-humans. Like, what do you do? <laughs> and I mean, a part of it probably is like adding bits of white fur and stuff. Because like I've seen like older animals, like dogs and cats and stuff. And they, you know, they get like white fur on their mouth and like... I don't know, maybe I need to go and look at it more, because, like, I do know some friends who have, like, older animals, and, like, I could just look at them and try to figure out, like, what signifies the age. That's some homework for me. <laughs> but yeah, it feels good to, like, start on a different character, like, um, because for the past little while I've been working on Ember, um, and he's a really important character, but it's nice to kind of, like, I guess, like, lift my head up and look at something new, because that's that tends to be how I work, is, like, I like to jump around between things. It keeps things really fresh and, like, stops me from, I guess, like, hyper-focusing on something so much that, like, you know, I hit a wall but I keep trying to go. <laughs> but yeah, not so good when you're trying to, like, make sure your designs are really diverse and then you keep doing the same thing over and over again because you can't, like, see the difference. So yeah, I like to change pace a lot. Um, like, I, I do it when I'm drawing, like, actual comic pages or when I'm, like, sketching or planning things out, is I will, like, just jump from, like, panel to panel or page to page or jump between characters. Um, just because it keeps things fresh, it keeps me from getting stuck too long. It does tend to lead to, like, all the hard work gets left to the very end, but I mean, like, I get to that point faster, so I guess it works out. <laughs> But yeah, being able to jump between characters has helped in the past. Like, that helped last week when I was working on Ember and his raccoon gang. Because I could jump between the different characters and be like, okay, so this is what Ember looks like and this is what Matches looks like. Like, I can compare them and push their designs further and stuff. So, like, I really like having all the characters lined up so I can tell them apart. But yeah, I, I mean, I still have work to do on those ones from last week. Um, cause like whenever I'm done working on, say like one of these sessions where I sit down and do a bunch of drawings, I always sit down with Bones and we go over like, does this match like the character you were picturing? Is this like, does this design match? Can I push it further? Like what's missing? What's done really well? Um, cause I find like when you're, you go into a critique session or you're like, you know, working on something, it's really good to highlight what what's working so that you don't accidentally get rid of it. So but it's really helpful to have bones during that. And like it helps with like most people I critique with. They're pretty good at like, most people are pretty chill and good with like pointing out like, oh, you did this really well and I like this. So like whenever someone says that to you, like definitely like ask why, cause it's good to know if they're like, oh, I like it cause I like this kind of thing personally. Or if they're like, oh, it really like works with the composition or it fits the character's personality personality. Like, the more there's, like, kind of evidence to back up what they're talking about, the better. Um, but anyways, when someone points this stuff out, mark it down. Keep it in mind so that you don't erase it by accident and then you lose sight of, like, the good stuff or, like, you start going in the wrong direction or something. Because I've totally done that with, like, illustrations and comics and design work. Is like, I'll be drawing out this character a million times and trying to, like, push the design and it happens especially when I'm doing it on my own, without any input or feedback from anyone else, where I, like, I'll start going in a direction that's totally wrong. 
in my head, I think I'm going in the right direction and being like, like, oh, this is working and this is working and this isn't working. And I start like pushing it and pushing it. And then I found out that I've just been going completely the wrong way. Like that happened with Ember the last couple times I was drawing him where like, um, I sat down and I was drawing him like based off a square and he was supposed to be really sturdy and like a cute schlubby dad. And then... And I kept pushing that and pushing that. And, like, for a character who's supposed to look like that, like, that would have been great. But it wasn't what fit the character. And then Bone sat down and was like, what are you doing? This is an ember. This isn't what I pictured. It's really good to get feedback on it. If you're working on it on your own, because admittedly, I'm working with a writer where I can ask him, like, does this design match up with the character you've written? However, if you're working on your own and you're in charge of your script and your characters... You know, how do you know that you're not going in the wrong direction? So I think the best thing to do is really to, like, make up a design document for them. Write down their personality, what kind of clothes they wear, how they move, what do they do in the story? Like, do they need a versatile design? Do they show up in one scene where they don't need a versatile design in that case? And, yeah, just kind of write down rules for yourself so that... If you look back at your design document and you look at your character and you're like, oh, I've totally drawn her to be way different than the personality that I've written down. And then you can evaluate, like, do I want to put this character in a different direction or am I totally off base with this design? Um, so it's really good to just have, like, a, a base camp for it, you know? Like, have a... Just have a guide for what you're doing so that it's not all in your head. Because I find, like, when you hold everything in your head, it's really easy to forget important details. Though I know some writers talk about how, like, if you can't hold it in your head, then, like, it wasn't a good idea. Like, it didn't stick with you long enough. But I think there's, like, there's a good balance to that. Because sometimes you will just forget a really important piece of information when you're drawing or designing or even like writing the thing you're writing. So it's really important to just keep notes about like what's important, what do I need to remember, even if it's like a small detail, like a piece of clothing they're supposed to be wearing, like it can break the flow of your story if they suddenly are missing like this really important item. I guess it never hurts to write things down. <laughs> but yeah, I'd be curious about like how other people tend to I guess, deal with character design, especially on their own. I mean, it never hurts even when you're working on, like, a comic by yourself to just show your designs to other people and say, like, what do you think of this character? Like, because that can be a really good gauge of if you are hitting those, those marks, I guess. Because if I showed someone, like, Feathercatcher here, I'd want them to be able to tell me what his personality is. With a comic, with your characters, you want at a glance, you want to be able to tell what their personality is. Um, there's a lot of visual signifiers for, like, who they are. So, like, Feathercatcher, like, if someone looked at him, I'd want them to tell me, like, oh, he looks older and more mature. He looks kind of grumpy and stuck up. <laughs> um, but he also looks, like, fierce and tough. Like, that's what I'd want to hear. <laughs> but if someone looked at it and they were like, oh, he looks really sweet or, oh, he looks like a, like a young hero guy, like, I'd be like, oh... I did something wrong because this is really off base. So it's really important to get that feedback to know if you're on track or if you're off track. And the person telling you might not know that you're off track. Like, it's it's really important to just get, get to know what they think about it. Don't necessarily ask, like, does this character look right? Do they look okay? Those are really... I mean, I guess they're all kind of, like, subjective questions, but, like, they're subjective in the wrong direction, because it's- you shouldn't have someone, like, validate if your character's good. You should just get their general feeling on how the character- get their feelings on what they think the character is like. Just get the, get them to, like, describe the personality they think. You know, you can ask them, like, does this character look like a villain or a hero, because that can be important. And then, I guess, be wary if they try to suggest things to you. I've talked about this in, like, um, my 100 Days Challenge about, like, um, critique and stuff. But whenever someone tells you what to do, you don't necessarily have to listen to them. I mean, you should take everything they say into account, because you never know. They might say something in a really weird, insulting way, but they might be right. Um, so it's always good to, like, consider everything people say. However, if they tell you, like, oh, you should make this character like this... You don't necessarily have to, you know? 
I guess that's obvious. If you're asking people's, like, advice, you don't always have to take it. It's your character. So, yeah, be wary of, like, prescriptive advice where they tell you what to do. Um, but it's always good to get a gauge of how someone is feeling about your character. Because likely that's how your audience will feel when they look at them. It's also great because sometimes you'll draw a character where you're like, yeah, they're so cool. And then someone will look at them and they'll be like, they look silly. And you're like, oh no. <laughs> so yeah, always get that advice early on. Because um, like the designs I'm doing right now are super, super early in. Like I've never drawn Feathercatcher before. I have a general impression of what I want him to look like. But like, you know, that can change. We didn't even know what kind of cat we wanted him to be before I sat down to draw. And like Bones and I were looking up different breeds of cats because we were... um. Because Mitzi, the other uh, knight character, the other knight main character who um, wants to be Feathercatcher Squire, she's a Siamese cat. Um, she's a blue point Siamese. And we were like, I don't know if I want another Siamese. Like, we want him to look really sleek and cool, but we don't want all the sleek, cool cats to be like Siamese cats. <laughs> and we wanted him to have kind of like a pedigree because he's like a nobleman type guy. So anyway, so we researched it and we picked a, a Javanese cat. They're really beautiful cats, I gotta say. They've got like this long, beautiful neck that's full of fur and like these big like almond eyes. They're so pretty. But yeah, okay. <laughs> but yeah, so going into Feathercatcher, I didn't know much about how I wanted to draw him. So right now I'm in very like exploratory phases, I guess. And probably next week, if I decide to like keep working on his design, I'll probably start really refining what the main shapes are and I guess what I really want him to be. And like, it'll be really fun when I start getting into his clothing because that says so much about a character is like what they wear and how they wear it. Um, so I'm really excited to get into that with Feathercatcher. <laughs> and all the other characters, to be honest. Um, yeah, I'm super excited to get into this more. I feel like I'm, I'm a little worried that, like, every episode of this vlog is going to be, like, just talking about character design. But I guess that's a good thing, because hopefully I can go kind of, like, I can dig deep into the topic of character design. Um, and hopefully people will learn stuff, because I'm learning a lot through designing characters. Like, um, I'm always learning more about, like animal anatomy and like you know general character design and making my characters distinct so it's really cool to kind of share with everyone kind of like what I'm learning and I love it when people leave comments about like what they do and what they think because like I'm always learning stuff from you guys so I super super appreciate that please don't stop telling me what to do because <laughs> yeah I want to know what other people do in case I'm missing something or in case you're doing something way better than I am tell me about your process I want to know okay I think that's all I have for today thank you so much for watching um if you have any questions or if you have something you want to tell me or if you'd like to submit like a video topic or something, please leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more vlogs about character design and setting design in the future and web comics. Please, please make sure to subscribe and check it out. Yeah, that's what this channel is all about. Okay. <laughs> and also, if you're interested, please go check out the Kickstarter for the Magpie. It'll be over in early June, so you gotta get your pledge in if you want it. Thank you so much for all the support um, and your kind words. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.